Today we discuss recursive sequences and the biggest difference between a recursive sequence and the sequence that we've been dealing with up to this point is when we write an equation, for instance, for a sequence to describe its nth term, for instance, something like a sub n is equal to n plus 1, if I want the hundredth term, I plug in a hundred, so a sub 100 is equal to 100 plus 1 or 101. If I want the 101st term of a recursive sequence, I can't do that. A recursive sequence is where each term is determined by one or more of its previous terms. So in order to get the 100th term for a recursive sequence, I need the 99th term or maybe the 98th term. I can't just plug in a specific number I'm looking for as far as the term goes and get that value out. So a couple of expressions. We know that a sub n talks about the nth term. If I say a sub n minus 1, that's the previous term. If we decide to make a sub n plus 1 the nth term, then the term before it is a sub n. Likewise, if I have a sub n being the nth term, the previous term is a sub n minus 1, and two terms before that is a sub n minus 2. So with that notation in mind, let's do a couple of problems. We want to write a recursive formula for this sequence. So remember, a recursive formula says I need to use a previous number to get the next number in line. Now, in all recursive formulas, you have to be given the first term. So we always state, well, my first term is equal to 2. And then if I want to write a formula, I say a sub n. And now I look at my pattern and I say, well, my pattern is just take the number before it and add 3. So if I want to take the number before my nth term, that's a sub n minus 1. That's the term before it and I add 3 to it. And that's basically our recursive formula. Now when we want to generate terms in a recursive formula, what we're going to do is start plugging in numbers. I've been told my first term is 20. So what I want now is I want my second term. And to get my second term, I'm going to plug a 2 into my subscript. So I have a sub 2 minus 1 minus 10, which is really 1 fifth. 2 minus 1 is 1 minus 10. So we can clearly see that a sub n minus 1 is the previous term or the first term. So now I just plug in 1 fifth times 20 minus 10, which is 4 minus 10, or negative 6. Then if I want my third term, again my subscript is 3, so I have a sub 3 minus 1 minus 10, which is 1 fifth, 3 minus 1 is 2, minus 10, and this says take 1 fifth of my second term. Well, my second term is negative 6. And subtract 10 from that. So I have negative 6 fifths minus 10 is negative 11 and 1 fifth. So then I want my next term, which is a sub 4. That's 1 fifth the previous term, I'm going to get away from plugging in now because I think you guys understand what we're doing. One fifth the previous term, which is 50, negative 56 over 5 minus 10, which gives me negative 56 over 25 minus 10 and that's going to end up equaling 
negative 306 over 25. Finally, I want my fifth term because that's the end of the next four terms. So I take one fifth multiplied by the previous term, which is negative 306 over 25. Subtract 10 from that. And I end up with negative 1,556 over 125. So again, it's just a case of plugging in, making substitutions, and grinding it out. We're going to practice some more. In this case, we have a sub n minus 1 representing our term in question, and we need to find 2 times the previous term plus 7. And we start with our first term equaling 5. So if I want my second term, a sub 2, I got 2 by getting 1 plus 1. Now that's 2 times the first term plus 7. Well, the first term is 5 plus 7 gives me 17. If I want my third term, that's equivalent to a sub 2 plus 1, which is, again, having a subscript of 2 in this case, so 2 times the second term plus 7, which is equal to 2 times 17 plus 7, or what is that? 34 plus 7 is 41. If I want my fourth term, my fourth term is equal to a sub 3 plus 1, which is 2 times my third term, plus 7. That's 2 times 41 plus 7, which is 89. And finally, my fifth term is obtained by taking a subscript 4 plus 1, or 2 times my fourth term, which is the previous term, plus 7, or 2 times 89 plus which is 185. So here's another. Again, we have a sub n is equal to 1 over a sub n minus 1, the previous term. I know my first term, once again, is a 10. So first term is 10. And rather than doing all the substitutions this time, I'm going to just say my second term equals 1 over my previous term, a sub n minus 1. The previous term is 10. And I'm done with that guy. Now I go to my third term. My third term is 1 over my previous term, which is 1 tenth. 1 over 1 tenth is equal to 1 times 10, or 10 in this case. Fourth term, 1 over my previous term. My previous term is 10. My fifth term is 1 over my previous term which again is 1 times 10 or 10. So this just alternates. We'll go again with our subscript of n plus 1 is the term we're looking for and a sub n is our previous term. But notice in this case we're dividing by the subscript. So we'll keep track of this this time and plug in. So if I want my second term I know my first term is 12. If I want my second term, I'm using a with a subscript of 1 plus 1 is equal to the first term over 1, because my subscript in this case is 1. So my first term is 12 over 1, which is 12. The third term is equal to subscript 2 plus 1, so my new subscript is 2 for n, 
and then I have the second term over n is equal to 2 in this case. So my second term was 12 over 2, which is 6. My fourth term is equal to a subscript of 3 plus 1. So my n value in this case is 3. So I'm dividing by 3 in this case. I get 6 over 3, which is 2. And then my fifth term is equal to a with a subscript of 4 plus 1. Once again, subscript 4, dividing by the n value, which is 4 in this case. So I have the fourth term, which is 2 over 4, or a half. Substituting just helps you keep track of things. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to write a recursive formula for this sequence. So what I find it good to do is look between the terms and see what's happening. So in this case, that's a difference of 8, that's a difference of 8. This one looks to be pretty straightforward, kind of like the first problem we did. We know our first term is equal to 12, and then my nth term is equal to my previous term plus 8. So that one's pretty straightforward. Some of these get more difficult. Let's take a look here. We have a difference of 2 here. Now we've got a difference of 3. Now we've got a difference of 4. And then a difference of 5. And remember, this is our first term our second term, our third term, our fourth term, and our fifth term. So that means when our subscript is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, I need to be able to plug those subscripts in and get these numbers out. So I need to take my previous term. That's got to be in every single one of our formulas. So we're going to take our previous term like so, and then to it, I have to add 2, and then add 3, and add 4. So if I'm already given the first term, or a sub 1 is equal to 8, then I have to plug in 2 here, and use my previous term, and add 2 to get my second term. Then I have to plug in 3, into my subscript, plug in my previous term, and add 3 to it. Then I have to plug in 4, use my previous term, and add 4 to it. Well, in saying it that way, if I say use my previous term and add my subscript n to it, this should be the recursive formula for this sequence. Let's just try a couple. So I take and say I want my second term, which is my first term, plus 2. Then I want my third term, which is my previous term, or my second term, plus 3. And my fourth term is my third term, plus 4. Let's try that out. So my second term is 8 plus 2, which is 10. And I'm right. My third term is my second term, which was 10, plus 3. So I should get 13. And I do. And then my fourth term is my previous term, or 13, plus 4, which should be 17. What do you know? So a lot of it's just, it's not a case of guessing and checking, but you have to see a pattern and then recognize what you're plugging in and what you're trying to get out. So with that we're done. Make sure you do your lesson summary and your Connect Ed problem and we'll discuss more tomorrow.